Hello, Wonder Hussy here on an unseasonably chilly late February day here in the beautiful Mojave Desert. Just the other day I was sunbathing nude in my backyard and well this cold snap blew in and there's snow on the mountains and whoo it's friggin cold. I think it's 39 degrees out here so <laughs> I gotta try to make this quick. So basically we are at an abandoned cinder mine. <laughs> There's my sister's forerunner parked right there waiting for us because I still need to get a bushing replaced on one of the shocks on my forerunner so I can't go off-roading until I get that done uh, two days from now. But my sister was kind enough to drive me out here to this place somebody tipped me off to. And well, yeah, it's an abandoned cinder mine. And there's a ton of really cool old cars, old trailers, old buildings. Oh, there's some mining equipment over the ridge there. We'll go check it all out. But first, I'm going to start in this old trailer. I mean, it doesn't look like there's much left in here. I'm assuming that this trailer was probably uh, housing for people who worked at this cinder mine because we're pretty far out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, if you look this way behind my sister's rig there, you can see the desert just stretches on for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles of nothingness. So it's not like people would have been commuting to work at this cinder mine from Vegas or Barstow. We're way out in the middle of nowhere. People would have had to have lived on site. So this is kind of like, well, I guess you could say this is a ghost town. This is the ghost town where all the people who worked in this cinder mine live. And yeah, it looks like there's a couple other shacks down there, but I'm guessing, well, whoever was the most important person at the mine lived in this fancy trailer. Let's go on up the stairs and see what's inside. <laughs> what's left of the stairs, yikes. Whoa. Oh my goodness, yeah, they had some real nice sofas. <laughs> they had a real, oh, look at this. <laughs> this is a fold-out love seat. It folds out into a twin bed, I guess. Interesting, a single bed, but look at that groovy mattress covering. I love that pattern. Oh my gosh, it is so cold in here. The wind is whistling through these windows and it is icy. Okay, maybe not technically icy, but uh, it was like 39 degrees. My sister's car said it was 39 degrees when we got here. So oh, that's why I got to do this fast. My fingers are freezing. Okay, so what else in this trailer? Oh, there was a desk where they did all the mine paperwork. <laughs> they had a kitchen, you know, cooked all kind of delicious meals for the miners <laughs> in there. Awesome 70s royal chef stove oven. Oh man, look at how cool these knobs are on these cabinets. I love that. Oh wow, look how cool the wallpaper is too. Oh my god, what a groovy kitchen. Oh look. What does this say? Celebrity ST6012R1CKD, Redlands, California. What is that? Is that like a ham radio number or something? Ham radio number. All the ham radio people watching this are probably like, you idiot, it's not called a ham radio number. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know what that was a code or a frequency or something. Okay, it doesn't look like there's really much left in here. Let's see. Oh, I think there's one more room down the hallway. Ooh. Oh my gosh, but look at this linoleum, how groovy that is. Oh my gosh, I love it. Oh. Okay, we're going down the hall to the bedroom. There's a really gross old bathroom. <laughs> oh, I still have some hand soap. Oh my gosh, but look in the shower. There's still a little scrubby and some uh, body wash. That's wild. Oh, look, here's a priority mailbox. I wonder if this has the name of the person who lived here. Oh, Jesse Caffey from Jean, Nevada. How about that? I mean, we're not that far, I guess, from Jean. We're pretty far from Jean. I don't know if your mailing address would be Jean out here. That's weird. Okay, well, now we're back in the back bedroom. Just an empty bedroom with some... Oh, look how cool this is, though. Fiesta wear boxes. That's like that collectible uh, dinnerware. People get really into that. <laughs> Somebody was collecting Fiesta wear here. Oh my gosh, and they had quite a collection. What is that? Little, some kind of little serving pot and a chop plate and a serving bowl, and oh my goodness. Oh, even a little teacup. Wow, so maybe the mine boss's wife was into collecting fiesta wear. And, you know, that was her one consolation, living way out here in this godforsaken mine in the middle of nowhere. At least she wanted to be able to collect her fiesta wear. Okay, well, it doesn't look like there's much else of interest in here. Uh, these styrofoam packing peanuts don't look that old. And matter of fact, there's an amazon.com box here, so that doesn't seem that old. Amazon's only been delivering for like, what, 10 years-ish? 
20 years. Hmm. Oh yeah, there's that same same address for Jean, Nevada. Interesting. Oh gosh, speaking of interesting, look, a dead mouse. Oh my goodness, yikes. Poor little guy. Oh wow, he's totally skeletonized. That's wild. Look at that. Oh wow, Wait, that is so creepy. I kind of want to take it with me, but I don't really need it. <laughs> I have enough creepy dead stuff uh, as it is. I don't need to collect a dead mouse and take it back with me. All right, well, let's uh, let's see what else is out here at this fascinating abandoned mine site. Oh, hey, look. I just happened to notice a Victoria's Secret box lid. Like from a, you know, when you buy somebody a fancy lingerie, they put it in a gift box. Uh -huh. So the mine boss, apparently, with the Fiesta Wear collecting wife, well, he bought his Fiesta Wear collecting wife some sexy lingerie. Or who knows? Maybe it wasn't his wife. Maybe he was just messing around with one of the female mine employees and he ordered her some fancy Victoria's Secret lingerie and had it shipped out here via Amazon. Oh my gosh, it is so cold out here. Okay, well, uh, before we go over into that mess, let's check out this old truck real quick. There's a couple old cars over here. Anybody want to take a guess as to what that truck is? Wow. Anybody drive a truck like this back in your day? Oh, it was a Chevrolet. If you guessed Chevrolet, well then you were right. <laughs> look at, whole engine's missing. But I bet she was a butte. And then look over here, I just happened to notice this old Budweiser can sitting here by this tumbleweed. Look at how old this Budweiser can is. Isn't that from like the 80s or 90s? And it's still so colorful and so perfectly preserved. <laughs> I'll just leave it right here where I found it so the next person can enjoy it. All right, so besides this old Chevy truck, uh, isn't this like one of the, an engine hoist or I don't know what you call it. It's something used for uh, mechanic stuff. I don't know, I'm guessing it's not a swing set, <laughs> even though I suppose you could swing on it. Oh yeah, what if there was like a little kid that had to grow up out here? Wouldn't this be a really strange place to grow up? I mean, it might be awesome. You have this whole amazing desert to fool around in and, well, <laughs> this awesome swing set to play on. Anyway, there's another car here next to the swing set thing. <laughs> uh, my sister thought this was a Datsun. Oh yeah, it is. Look, it says Datsun right there. Anybody ever drive one of these bad boys? <laughs> wow, look at this beaut. What a paint job. Not too many bullet holes. Uh, upholstery still relatively intact. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so we just checked out the two cars. We checked out that trailer. This water tank does have some graffiti on it, but there's really not a whole lot of graffiti out here. We're pretty far off the beaten path. Uh, so I'm guessing a lot of big city taggers don't make it out this far. Lots of desert detritus out here, old wheelbarrow. Lots of cinder blocks, which I guess they make out of the cinder they mine here. Old tanks. This is like a washing machine drum, maybe? Just the usual stuff you see piled up in the desert. And then this mysterious shack back here. Huh? Well, it looks like it was just storage. Okay, now we're coming up on this sort of cluster of buildings. It looks like a cinder block cabin that has some kind of little tiny wood annex built off the back. <laughs> that looks really interesting. Uh, and then there's a kind of like a trailer parked out front that I guess was also part of the living quarters. Oh my gosh, look through the window. This is creepy. <laughs> Can't see it yet. Can't see it yet. Maybe you can start seeing it now. It says, I have a dream. Well, I guess maybe that sort of echoes back to Martin Luther King, but well, I just think of this poor mine boss's wife collecting her fiesta wear, wearing her little Victoria's Secret negligee, dreaming about being anywhere but way out here. And everything is like especially creepy right now because it's winter and everything's dead. Like these two, well, it looks like those might be fruit trees of some sort. So there must be some kind of groundwater here, I guess. Yeah, you know, huh? I guess we'll find out. Look down here. It's a toy. So there must have been a little kid out here. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's go on into this weird compound. I guess at first we got a real cool old fridge style line. Look at that. I wonder if there's anything inside. Oh, there sure is. All kinds of old bolts and rusty bits of junk and looks like even a pair of <laughs> boxers or something. Woo! Check the freezer. Oh, freezer is empty. 
Look at that. Handy shelf. <laughs> oh, it's a Cervelle. I guess a Cervelle style line was the model. Old trailer here that was apparently somebody's house. Let's take a quick peek in. Oh my, I mean, it, you can see that it probably was real cozy at one time. Nice wood paneling, but ugh. full of junk. You can't even walk through it. I mean, I am wearing galoshes that I guess sort of protect me, but I don't know. I don't really want to wade through all this to get back in there. Maybe I can just sort of peek in the window from outside. Let's see. Yeah. Just junk, but oh my god, what an unspeakable pile of junk. Let me zoom in. I mean, if you can see that pile of junk, it's just like a little bit of everything. Bits of wood, bits of twigs, bits of plastic, old seashells. How are there seashells way out here in the middle of the desert? Okay, that is wild. Oh my god, and then there's this old Kmart uh, fan set in the doorway. Remember Kmart? So they probably had the fan here in the doorway because it gets real hot out here in the summer. And Oh my god, somebody sat in there just a sweating away. Okay, meanwhile, there's just a bunch of other junk strewn around back out here. There's a whole kitchen console, a camper top for a truck, there's an old uh, flatbed trailer. Whew, it's cold out here. Let's go inside this cinder block house if we can get out of the wind. Oh, this is just a. Oh, what is this? I guess this might be like the back door of the laundry room or something. Christmas liquidation sale. Oh, December 1st to 26th, 2000. So people were out here as recently as the year 2000. Wow. Oh my God, look how creepy this is. <laughs> it's curtain blowing. And then what is a R.I.P. Bill Williams 23. Anyone ever hear of Bill Williams number 23? Maybe he was like a like a NASCAR driver or something? I don't know. Bunches of junk all over the floor. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Crisp rice cereal. That's like the ultimate generic rice krispies <laughs> ready to eat. Oh, distributed by the USDA in cooperation with state and local or tribal governments. Oh, wow. So it's like government food for uh, Native Americans? Oh, wow. So like, you know how they talk about government cheese? Apparently there's like government cereal too not to be sold or exchanged inspected by the u.s department of agriculture natural foods the real value for flavor and health so somebody was going to a natural food store <laughs> ross auctions cap oh here's an old newspaper let's see what year maybe it's from the year 2000 let's see what we're working with here yep december 7th 2000 uh di what paper is that let me see oh DL. DI? I don't know. It's, it looks like it says DI, but then the paper's called Desert Life. Oh my gosh. Oh, it says uh, calendar at Ridgecrest, California. It must be out of Ridgecrest. Okay, well, I guess we're not that far from Ridgecrest. Let's see if there's anything in the fridge. Oh, yikes. Cheerios, mystery bottles, a giant candle just all kind of pack rat junk <laughs> oh my god there's still a couple sodas in here <laughs> oh my gosh look in the other side of the house though it's this kind of door with a window in it you can see right on in there <gasps> oh, we gotta go check that out we'll go back out the way we came back out onto the front porch turn right oh there is no front door how do we get in there I guess I did have to go through that door. Oh my goodness. This place is terrifying. Okay, now we're out on the side patio, I guess. There's all these weird decorative stones somebody took the time to do. That's actually really cool. This was actually probably a really cool little patio. You know, those if those were fruit trees and they had all these cool little stones out front. Oh, I bet it was real pretty. Oh my gosh, you guys, look, it's snowing. Shut the front door. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> I was just sunbathing nude the other day and now I'm making a video in a friggin snow flurry. This is wild. I'll just shoot a little bit of footage of it for those of you who don't believe it could ever snow in the desert. Well, I'm here to tell you up here at 4,000 feet, it can and does snow in the desert. Oh my goodness. Snow all over these cinder cones. Snow all over the cinder. Snow everywhere. Okay, well, I'm going to get in this house to get out of the snow. 
Um, well, I could go through the front door, or I could just climb on in the window. She came in through the living room window. Oh my gosh, look at this friggin' fireplace. They were not messing around here. I mean, yeah, now I understand why it snows here in the winter. <laughs> look at the size of this fireplace in this living room. That's amazing. Oh, I sure wish it was lit up right about now. This is a great living room, actually. Let me back up. I'm gonna back right up against the window we crawled in. Uh, so you can see they had some pretty colorful carpeting that looks like it probably came from a casino at one point. Um, there's some questionable graffiti here. It says, a good cop is a dead cop. I don't know how you feel about that. Uh, oh my god. Just amazing tableaus every which way. These curtains blowing eerily in the wind over this amazing 70s couch. <laughs> With this amazing surprise behind the curtain. <laughs> a cowboy boot. <laughs> the other one's right over here. Right next to this vermouth bottle. Oh my goodness, somebody liked vermouth here. They were having martinis, oh my God. I mean, you'll have to use your imagination a little bit, but if this living room was back to rights and that fireplace was roaring and snow was falling outside and it was all nice and tidy and cozy in here, Having a martini on a winter's day in the middle of the Mojave Desert would be all right with me. Oh, look at the size of that rat trap though. I mean, for reference, <laughs> there's my foot next to it. That is a big rat trap. Yikes. <laughs> okay, so there's the door we were looking through uh, from that other room with the Bill Williams fridge. Here's the kitchen in here. This looks like this is where that console outside came out of. And this looks like it was a really nice, big, sunny kitchen back in its day. <laughs> Had some real nice, uh, cheerful, sort of Native American patterned wallpaper. Uh, there's a fridge in here. Look at the groovy handles on this refrigerator. I mean, that's, man, that's design, you know? Design nowadays sucks. Back then they knew what was up. Okay, not much left in the fridge. Mm, not really much in the freezer. Old toothbrush, a few plates. <laughs> oh gosh, look at the pantry. Oh golly. <laughs> Rock samples. What's for dinner? Cinder? Again? Seems like all we ever have is cinder out here. <laughs> well, I'm trying to keep you nice and trim so you'll fit into them Victoria's Secret panties I bought you. But I can't serve cinder on my fiesta wear. It'll crack the plates. Anyway, uh, more old pots and pans. Another old newspaper. Oh my gosh, see what this one's from. No, oh, this one's also from 2000. So apparently people were here in 2000, 2001. Interesting. Oh, this must have been the, the firewood bin. I guess, I don't know. <laughs> Hard to say in this place. Man, it was probably really cozy in here. I'm not kidding. I love that couch, love that chair, love that fireplace. Let's see what's back here. This is the bedroom that had that I have a dream graffiti on the wall. So this was the bedroom, it's just a one bedroom house. Big old queen king size mattress there under the I have a dream headboard. And then they had a big old chest of drawers console with a mirror on it and that graffiti there, Aware. That's a really well-known graffiti collective that operates in this area. Or at least they used to a few years ago. They did a bunch of really interesting art projects all over the desert. Uh, some of their stuff was really cool. Like they did a bunch of stuff at that abandoned water park. Uh, they did that giant fake PBR can that I made a video of a few years ago. I think they did the <laughs> Wheel of Misfortune. Lots of cool stuff. Also lots of questionable stuff. I guess it all depends on how you feel about graffiti. And I feel like in a place like this that's already gone to pot, well, you know, who cares? Really big desk in here too. Do more work. Man, this is what, oh look, more cowboy boots. These are, I mean, well, they were nice boots and they're just sitting here. Rotten away. Oh my gosh, yeah, look. <laughs> nail polish. Oh, so there was a lady living here too. There's nail polish and pedicure to uh, foot lotion. So she was taking care of her feet. So golly, I was gonna say, I thought that big trailer would have been the fancy house, but I don't know. This is a pretty nice place too. Or I don't know, maybe not. I mean, look at the closet. <laughs> I'm guessing this is just where they hung their clothes. You know, all these dowels that are just sort of suspended from the ceiling rafters on these creepy chains. I mean, I can't imagine why else they have. <laughs> there's one hung there, there's one hung there, and then there's one hung here. So, <laughs> and there's no closet. So this must've been where 
whoever that lady who had that nail polish was hung up all her clothes. Golly, she couldn't have been too happy about that, you know, already being dragged to live out here. Her and the lady in the other trailer probably used to get together and have coffee and complain all the time. Matter of fact, maybe they didn't get together for coffee. They got together for <laughs> martinis. That's what that vermouth was. The, the guys would go work in the cinder mine and she'd come over here and they'd just get sloshed all day and complain about life out in the desert. <laughs> Who can blame them? Huh, so I could go back out the door, the front door there, civilized like through the screen, or I could climb back out through the window I climbed in, but I think for funsies, we ought to exit uh, right through the wall. Why not? There's a big old hole in the drywall. Let's go through. Uh, back out into the snow. Oh my gosh, it is so friggin' cold. And the sun just kind of came through a little bit, but it's still friggin' cold, but beautiful. I mean, look at this landscape. This might not be beautiful to you, this weird volcanic rock popping out of these Joshua trees. Oh, and if you see a mysterious figure walking by, don't be alarmed, that's my sis. There's not somebody else here, as far as I know. But yeah, it's just, I think this is beautiful. And uh, well, like I said, if that living room was all fixed up like it must have been way back in the day, I think this could have been a really nice place to live. Oh, my sister's totally into this place, too. She doesn't go exploring with me very much anymore. She's always busy working on projects at our house. So this is kind of a fun little trip for her, too. Okay, well, we're going to head over. The, look, there was another abandoned, like more of an abandoned work site over the ridge. And so we're going to go check that out. But before we leave the homestead, one last little pan. Uh, again, just this amazing side deck, back deck, front yard. I don't know. Oh, yeah, you can see the chimney from out here for that giant fireplace. Man, that thing was not messing around. But yeah, if you can just use your imagination and picture what it must have looked like here when people were living here, I bet it was real nice. I mean, yeah, you can see here they had plumbed water coming from somewhere. And so probably watered the plants, had a whole little garden going when these trees were flowering. Oh wait, before we leave this uh, side, there is one more busted old car that we should check out real quick. <laughs> Looks more like an 80s. Look, Buick for sale. <laughs> oh my God, I love these big old classic boats. Oh look, part of the old seat belt just laying down here. <laughs> oh, far out. Yeah, tires are flat. <laughs> Again, another butte in its day. Oh wow, this looks like the kind of car I would have ridden around in with my grandma when I was a little girl. Stereo is still in there, oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, so we just drove over from uh, the little ghost town where the people lived over here to where these cinder miners work. Tune in next time for part two of my adventure at the abandoned cinder mine, where I explore the actual abandoned mining operation itself. Lots of cool old machinery, lots of cool old cars, death-defying ladder climbs, and amazing panoramic views. You won't want to miss a minute of my return to Cinda. So stay tuned, don't touch that dial, and be sure to smash that subscribe button. See you then.